Now that the shock is somewhat clean, um, the first step is to remove the wiper cap. Next step, remove the pressure. So the pressure has been released from the reservoir, so the next step is to uh, pull the seal head down. It's just a light pressure. If it's stuck, um, sometimes I'll just take a, an extension and a rubber mallet and just tap it a few times. To Then you want to remove the snap ring inside. Careful that it doesn't pop out. So you either lose it or hit yourself in the eye. But the next step is to remove the seal head by rocking back and forth. Wear band that sometimes will fall off. Luckily it didn't this time. And again, set that apart in the parts bin. The other thing I'm going to do is just kind of tilt this and let the shock oil flow out of the uh, valving and piston. Sometimes it'll store in there. I'm just going to wipe it off just a little bit and lay it aside in a clean bin. At this point I really don't need to do anything else to the shock body. I will, however, when I revalve and put the piston back in, need to take this reservoir end cap out. And to do that, it's much easier to mount it in the vise. So I can either seal up this top here to keep the oil from coming out, but as you press down the internal floating piston, it's going to drive some air or oil back in here and it'll start spilling over. So I prefer just to drain the shock body. So you're going to set this aside, keeping the shock body upright, just so if any oil does leak out of this reservoir, it'll be contained in the shock. The instructions from FOA say to clamp the eyelet into a vise. The problem I had yesterday is that this shaft is threaded on the end for the nut and on the other end for the shock head. When I tried taking off the other ones, this nut was torqued so tightly that when I tried to take it off, it ended up just unscrewing the shaft from, from the uh, head of the shock. And I could not grip the shaft because it is a hard chrome, it's very slippery, and I could not grip it tightly enough in this vice without marring it that it was having a really difficult time so what I ended up doing is removing the head because that's what shaft wanted to come off I slid all this hardware off the seal uh, the wiper cap the seal head and put on two three-quarter locking collars um, it would be easier if these are split collars I could just grip the shaft and tighten them down but these are just a single side shaft collars clamping shaft collars and I put two of those put those in the vise, cranked it as hard as I could, and made it wonderfully easy to take that nut off. Um, you do not want the shaft collars with the set screw, that's just going to damage the shaft. So either a split, a fully split locking collar, or a half split locking collar uh, will work just great to hold that shaft to allow you to take this nut off.
We got two collars on here. We're just going to space them close, close to the piston. Place them with the split end facing up so that the vise will actually continue to clamp on them. Now take off this piston. And take off the rebound shims. You know, if any little bits of aluminum might be on them. You place them stacked in order on your parts tray. The piston comes off next. There's the compression shims. These are the ones I'm replacing. But I'm going to keep these. So I already did one set those shims, so I'm just going to keep these in the same bag. This is spares. The ones I'm replacing it with are right here. This washer is only on the compression stack on this shock. I do have a replacement shock, one that I got more recently from FOA. And they actually have these washers both on the rebound and the compression side. And that uh, torque nut, the nylock, was a lot easier to get off on that one, too. And I'm going to go ahead and put the shim stack on. The wide base goes against the piston. Remember that the two flat holes go against the compression stack. And you have your rebound again. The flat side goes against the piston. and no thick washer on, on this shock. So just the nut goes up. You're going to want to put your seal head on first. The threads are going to face away. Then your riper cap. Sometimes you need a little persuasion. Shaft probably again to 30 pound feet of torque. Now this is often challenging. I have to pull the reservoir end cap out and just put the valve cap back on to protect it. 
And the best way I've figured out how to do it is just the straighter valve is threaded in, and so I grab those threads, these channel locks, and then kind of rotate and rock. Like I noted earlier, this is an early shock. Um, has this one really, really fat O-ring. The new ones, or the replacement shock I got at least, has they're still really pretty thick O-rings, but there's two of them on this uh, reservoir and cap. The reason why we do this is we have to measure where that internal floating piston is. Right now, it's about here, and it needs to be eight inches. We are only at five and three quarters. Right now, so I get this down and stick this handle. A lot of times, this will drive air and oil out of this uh, reservoir into the shock body. So, if it is hanging there, you'll need something to have it drip into. Now we're at uh, just under nine inches and it needs to be eight or more. That just means we'll need a, just a little bit less oil to put back in the shock. So now that that's done, we're just gonna leave this end open. Put the shock body back in the vise. Next, set the wiper cap and seal that up. And just put the piston, don't forget to put the wear band back on, just put the piston and valving back in. What we do, do now is basically just purging the shock. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that in there and then we check check the piston again, still where it was, which is good. And then you need to fill this to about a quarter inch at the top. Your snap ring. Take a little oil and just put it on the lube up this reservoir and cap. That until I can see the snap ring groove. Okay, 
Now FOA instructs to get this reservoir end cap to pop back in place. To compress the shock, but as far as I can tell, that doesn't make a discernible difference to the reservoir end cap. So again, what I do is put on your valve stem cap for protection. Make the channel locks. Slide this hole until it snaps in place. And then you'll want to charge the shock. You can see that when I filled charged it, this res this wiper cap is now uh, popped out some. And test and it should come back up all by itself.